set this down here for a minute and let people join in here. Hey everybody. I'm just spinning this up, so give me uh, give me just a minute here to let people get all in here and everything. Can someone post something in the chat? I want to make sure that that's working. All right, looks like we're getting some people in here. Got five, six people in here so far. Do, 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 do. It's probably sit somewhere that you can actually see me. Mike Boss, thank you for confirming my chat works. Do you know somebody that can fix an ECU from a 1993 Mini? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, maybe one of the race shops, maybe specialist components. Um, hmm, MED might, I think they have an ECU. Maybe they know how to at least tune one. I'm, I'm, I'm actually not very sure. I suppose Mini Spares, somebody near nearby them probably would know how to do it too. Alrighty, looks like we're, I have to hold my hand up so I can see how many viewers there are because this area up here is white in the background. So, got 10 people so far. Welcome everybody. I know this is kind of, uh, I guess, later in the UK, but I figured since it was a Saturday night, people would be getting on here. Alex Toon, hey man, thanks for joining in. When do you hope you're having, you, when do you hope to have your mini finished? Well, I have some exciting news. Let me show you guys something here. Boop, switch that around. Look at that. Look at all of that. It's all connected up. And just open up the hood here. It's hard to do with one hand. Those vertical hinges are a little funky. Well, I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. Check that out. Breather system, new clutch arm. Got my filters on. Everything is connected up. Um, so I would not call it done, but I would say that it's like 98% done. Um, I actually just took it for a rip around the neighborhood. This thing is fast. Like, holy shit, y'all. This is real fast. Um, I mean, for a mini, obviously. I'm really excited to get this tuned in and kind of like dialed in the way I want it. But... was shutting so nice earlier oh well like I said 98% done so when I took it for a ride just a little bit ago it actually was chirping the what it was actually chirping the wheels in first and second gear um, which was pretty neat um, I was a little heavy on the on the foot there to try and kind of put it through its paces but it's it's coming together. Definitely got me jazzed up for today. All right, let's see here. I'm using my like Osmo right now to stabilize everything, and I almost knocked it over. So <laughs> that's fun. So what are you guys what are you guys up to? You got any questions for me? Mini questions? Happy to answer right now. I've got about an hour I can do a live session for. Fernando says, hola, saludos desde de Chile. So are you from, I'm guessing you're in Chile? Well, welcome, welcome to the live stream. One tip you'd give to a restoration of a classic mini. Um, take your time. Sometimes it gets really, uh, like, get really jazzed up and you wanna finish all this stuff really fast, but it's it will pay off tenfold if you just kind of like, take your time, take things apart, be methodical, um, and uh, I think that that will make sure that you have, you know, set yourself up for success. 
And uh, if you see rust, don't don't panic. All of them have rust. Jack Thomas says hello from England. Hello, hand emoji. I guess this is not an emoji. This is just my actual hand. Avenger says, are you using electronic ignition in your Mini or considering one? Yes. So I am using electronic ignition now. Um, I used to have an older, like, uh, I don't even remember the model number. This is my old distributor. Um, and it was like semi-electronic. I mean, it still had mechanical advance and everything like that. But um, the semi-electronic, I converted it from points to this uh, electromagnetic thingy. Um, that was way worth it. But now I have a one, two, three distributor. Um, and it's just running a standard advanced curve, like the base advanced curve right now. And then I'll be tweaking that, you know, once the car is on the road and I have a little bit more energy. Um, Fernando says, excelente programa. I do not speak this language, so I'm going to butcher this. Maybe I shouldn't read it out loud. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing that it looks like Portuguese, is that right? Lone Star Mini says, just a shout out to say thank you for all your videos in person. Um, well, thank you. Uh, Lone Star Mini, I feel like I heard your name on Dave Jaguar's uh, channel, like, today, actually. I didn't finish his video, it was about Evans Coolant, and uh, I'm already an Evans Coolant, you know, a fan, so. <laughs> but I do remember seeing, hearing your name, so. I'm gonna have to check out your channel. I hear you are doing a restoration as well. Ollie Firth FPV says, one more question, would you recommend a Mini as a first car? Um, it, you just gotta have a certain, hmm, yes. The short answer is yes, I would recommend it as a first car, especially if you live in a city or like, actually if you live way out in the country, it'd be a good first car too. Um, really, the thing you got to think about with the minis is one they're old things break and unless you are wanting to unless you're willing to get in there and do it yourself you know there's going to be a lot of times it's in the shop and that's okay i mean it's not like unmanageable or anything i drive my car really regularly um the only thing i would say is it's not as safe as modern cars are so that's uh that's that's definitely a consideration The Australian says, have you always had an interest in minis? If not, when did you find that interest? So um, I have had an interest in classic minis since I bought one of the new minis, the BMW minis. Um, I had a 2007 Cooper S and then I didn't really know much about the old ones, you know, prior to that, driving that car. And then I got the experience and I saw these old ones and I was like, man, that's what I want. And then I got one, didn't know shit about cars, and just took it apart and started fixing it. And now, the rest is history. I've had it for about nine years now. Um, so I don't, I can't see myself in really loving any other car besides a Mini. I mean, I love other cars, but nothing like a Mini. Um, Jack Thomas says, I watched Dave Jaguar 66. He's restoring a Mini and a Jaguar. Yes, he is. He's a really good dude too. I uh, was in Austria. In, v in Vienna, which is where he lives, and I, I completely blanked. I really wish I had, had reached out to him to meet him because he is a really cool dude. Ali says, thank you, keep up the great work. Thank you. If you have any other questions, I'm here. I'm, I'm open for like an hour, open for business, ask away. I'm just tidying up my workspace right now because it is a mess. I am getting ready, uh, spoiler alert, I'm getting ready to do a giveaway, and I haven't announced this in any of my videos, so you guys are the first to hear it. Um, I'm gonna be giving away a CAD short shift, um, rod change, remote shift, whatever you have, um, to celebrate getting 10,000 subscribers. I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers, and I think with giveaway and everything, we might just hit it. So I'm definitely gonna be giving away one of those. Uh, Juan says, I follow you here from Japan. Lots of help from your videos. Keep it up. Thank you. That's a long way. What time is it in Japan right now? It's a, uh, they're 12 hours difference than the East Coast, Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> no, Brad, don't unsubscribe. Sad. Come back. <laughs>
6.57 a.m. on Sunday. Man, you're up early. Well, good morning. Um, sounds like you're in the future. Pretty cool. Jack Thomas says, do you think you'd get a mini Clubman Estate? Um, I think they're pretty cool. Um, I, I like the Clubman front. I don't necessarily, I have no pros or cons against the Estate. Personally, what I really want is a pickup. Um, I've got a Toyota Tacoma um, as my regular car and then my Mini, but I've always wanted one of those Mini pickups. And I think if we can reach the, the goal for patrons uh, to to do the K-Series, and that's a BMW uh, K100 head swap on one of these blocks, um, I would really like to put it into a uh, pickup Mini. So think about that as the next project. Um, 1057, 1058 in the UK, huh? Well, getting ready for bed. Um, Keith Miller says, do you have a favorite mini tool? Oh, that's a tough one. The one I use the most, the most. Are you ready for this? It's mind blowing, I'm gonna grab it. Oh yeah, right? mind blown it's a half inch wrench but it has this little ratchety thing this wrench has touched pretty much every half inch bolt on my car um i i know it's really lame but this is like one of my favorite tools um as far as like a mini specific tool oh man that's that's a tough one i'm looking in my tool drawer right now probably this one ball joint splitter. Um, specifically this style of ball joint splitter, I don't like the kind you hammer. Those suck. They fall apart and they, the teeth spread apart. So that would be my recommendation. What else do we have here? Um, Fez says, uh, what is your drive in doing a VTEC R1, et cetera, mini convert? Yeah, really the challenge. The VTEC one is lower on my list. It's probably the most expensive one out of all of those, but it's lower on my list. Um, the R1 and the K-Series head just feel like something really cool I've never done before. And uh, if, and to be honest, if I can get it like totally funded, you know, I've even kind of considered like building the motor and then giving it away. Um, so that might be kind of cool. Um, Matt says, nothing better than pumping a radius arm full of grease till it pops out. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty satisfying. Um, Keith Miller says, perfect for exhaust studs. Yes, exactly. Those half inch, half inch nuts. Alex Toon says, tough one for me, probably blue. I guess you're talking about your two minis. Forward 160 says, hi, can you put a 1275 head on a 998? And if so, what problems can you run into? That, I actually have a 998 rebuild video. We're in the process of putting a 1275 head onto a 998. I'm calling it the Super 998. Um, if you look at my video history, there's a playlist that actually goes through it. Right now, I'm kind of in the holding pattern because the person I'm building the motor for is like super, super busy. He's had some kids recently. So um, I'm trying to work around his schedule, but as soon as we can, I think we're gonna put it in a red pickup mini, I think. That's the plan. That might change though. Uh, Minisora says ratchet spanners are excellent. Yep. Christian Bocomp sa Bochamp says, let's see here, click adjust for me. Um, Jack Thomas asks, what is your dream car? Um, to be honest, this is really my dream car. Um, I, if, my garage will always have a Mini in it. Specifically, it'll probably always have this Mini in it. I don't know that I'm ever, ever gonna sell this Mini, um, but I do wanna supplement it. Uh, secondary favorite car would probably be like the old 60s um, uh, Skylines. They're not technically Skylines, I guess, the old GTRs with the, with the wing mirrors. Ooh, man, that's some Japanese style right there that I just can't, can't get enough of. Uh, Ali first says, have you any experience putting wide arches on a mini? If so, was it a tricky process? Um, I don't think that, I, I put slightly wider arches on this mini, I can show you if you wanna see them, um, but it's not really tricky uh, and putting wider ones on shouldn't be any, any more difficult. 
uh, unless the wheels are much wider, then you're gonna have to kind of compensate for that in the arches. You might have to do some cutting um, so that the wheel can actually travel. Um, doo -doo -doo. Brad says, what is your favorite, whoops. What is your favorite model of classic mini? I have a 93 Italian job, but love the mini 30. Um, hmm. I don't, I don't actually know all of the editions of the minis that are out, but I really like those police car minis. I don't know if they ever used them like in the police force in the UK and in, in England, but maybe they did. Um, I don't know, they just look really cool to me. It's not really a production mini though. Jack Thomas says his favorite, uh, his dream car is a Ford Escort Mark I. I actually, you know what, I had forgotten about that car. That one is, that one's mint. I haven't, we don't have them here in the US, not in the same way at least, and they're, that's a nice looking car. Australian says, have you all, have you ever considered doing track days with your Mini? I have done some autocrosses about a couple years ago, um, but it's really, really hard on the car, which don't get me wrong, these Minis can take a beating, um, but, I really like to drive mine like almost every day and uh, like any day that I can, I drive it to work, drive it to and from work. And um, if I track it, it just means less time that it's on the road because I have to do more maintenance. So it's, it's trade off, but I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Um, nope, nope, spanners, that's not a real word. I, Brad, uh-uh, wait, he says, wait, Brad says, wait, ratchet spanner is excellent. Yep, Cole finally realized his errors. No, mm -mm. no, they're, they're, they're wrenches. <laughs> um, Mini Tom says, what editing software do you use? Anything that I can use on my iPhone? Um, I don't use uh, iPhone editing software. I know that they make some, uh, but I've not had an opportunity to use it. Um, that's my camera right up there. That's just a Canon ADD, ADD um, which is, I think, a generation old now. So you might be able to pick those up pretty inexpensive, um, you know, relative to DSLR. But the software I use is Final Cut Pro 10 um, on the Mac. But you can use iMovie as well. Adobe Premiere is really good. Um, if you, if you email me, let me know, I can help you get some stuff for inexpensive. Um, you can email me at classicminidiy at gmail.com. Mini Tom, I am happy to help you out with that editing software, help you get, get rolling. Let's see here. Where the chat we got in here. Alex Toon says, Mini Tom, I thought you had disappeared off the face of the earth. Ooh, video out tomorrow. I'll be checking that out. Um, Bradley Crandon says, should I get a lightened flywheel? So I have a question for you about that. Uh, lightened flywheels are cool, but if you don't have the complimentary um, final drive gear, if you've got a, a, a ratio that won't necessarily work, so I've got a 2.95 in my car, and um, getting a lightened flywheel with a 2.95 is like, it just would be, dog awful off the line like when you punch it off the line it would be miserable um if you have like a, a, a shorter uh, final drive gear you probably could do something with a light and flywheel um you might want to reach out to med engineering shoot them an email they had some really good info from me because i wasn't super well versed on all of that um prior to looking into it um brad says how many minis is too many minis that's it's kind of hard to say. How many minis is too many minis? Um, well, if you ask my wife, if in, in our current setup with the carport, one mini is more than enough. But from my opinion, I could fit three minis into this carport easily. So I don't think there's a limit in my mind. Um, Lone Star Mini says, with the electric distributor, do you have to worry about a splash guard? Otherwise, uh, what is the best splash guard you have found? With the electric ones, I, I don't really worry about it. Um, the points were really finicky with water. Um, but even if you switch to just the electromagnetic one that I showed you guys earlier, um, you don't need a splash guard anymore. It kind of defeats, excuse me, it defeats the need for one of those splash guards. Um, 
The Australian says, would you consider getting another mini which is a fully track focused? Yes. Actually, I'd really like to have one of those pickup minis and I would make that a track car. That K-series motor, if I did put it into a car that was mine with, instead of giving the motor away. Um, yeah, yeah, I'd definitely make a track car. That'd be, that'd be really cool. Uh, Ilias says, I have a Rover Mini 1.3 from 1992 and it's not been running for five years. Got it running again, but if you quickly step on the gas and take it back off again, it backfires, runs not smooth. Problem. It backfires when you let off the gas. Hmm. My guess is that there's too much fuel getting injected or like there's... Because <sighs> generally a backfire, you have... Um, the timing actually might be off now that I'm thinking about it you, because I've gotten some pretty bad backfires while I was getting this motor timed. Um, so that might have something to do with it. I would check your timing and uh, the MPIs and the SPIs, you know, the injected motors, I'm not as familiar with. Um, so I, I can't give you too much guidance on that part, but definitely check your timing. Um, also, Ilias, there is a timing video um, done by Steveston Motor Co. They are really, really cool guys. Um, check out their channel. Uh, I put it, put it up here like I have a link to it, but I don't. Um, Steveston Motor Co. They have a whole timing video and it's really, really comprehensive. So check that out. <laughs> Minisora says, what ratio do you recommend with a 1275 on 10 inch wheels? Well, what I'm running, is 10 inch wheels with a 1293 and I have the 2.95. Um, I think it really depends on what you wanna use the car for. So are you gonna be on the highway a lot or the motorway, I guess, the, you folks in the UK, that's what you call it. But um, if you're gonna be on the highway a lot, you know, a taller final drive gear, so a bigger, like a 2.95 would be better. Um, if you are only in the city, if you're looking for like real quick power, like right off the line, you want something shorter. So um, I think I remember reading uh, 3.1 was pretty good for like kind of city, um, a bit of both. Well, I drive my mini on the highway to Charlotte and then Charlotte is pretty busy now. It's actually kind of turned into a little bit bigger of a city and I drive it around the city streets and it's perfect. And keep in mind, like I was saying earlier, I, I definitely chirp the, the wheels off the first and second with that 2.95 now, now that I've got the car driving again. Um, Mary Miller says, I have a 1986 Mini 998. The engine bogs down when you give it gas. Cleaned carb set timing, but still having issues. Um, my guess is that you have too much fuel going to the motor or, yeah, I would probably lean towards too much fuel. Um, take the spark plugs out and look at the color. Um, if they are white, it's too lean. Um, if they are like a nice golden brown, that means it's the right amount of fuel. And if they're like black, it means it's too rich. And um, I didn't see, what was the carb you said you had? Oh, I see. If it's a single carb, there is a um, adjustment screw on the bottom of it. It's the same way with dual carbs too. And you can adjust it one way or the other to give it more or less fuel. I can't remember which way is which. I literally have to look it up every single time. So um, that's what I would check is fueling. Dave Jaguar, hey, welcome. Thanks for joining. Hi, Cole, I just did a video on Evans Coolant. Are you using it? And did you do a video, and as you did a video on it a while back? Yes, I am still using it. Um, Ta -da. It's a little bit different here. It's a Evans High Performance Waterless Engine Coolant. They've got different names for it in the UK, but um, it's the same product. According to the Evans guys, they sponsored that video, so they gave me a lot of good info. Um, let's turn that up a little bit. Um, Yes, I'm still running it. Yes, I'm really happy with it still. Yes, I'm gonna keep running it. Um, I saw your video, I keep meaning to finish it. I got about halfway through and then I got really hungry, I had to go get some lunch. Gomer Pyle says, why did you go back to dual SU carbs instead of the HIF44? Well, two reasons. One, Seven Mini Parts sent me that carburetor um, for free to do that video on um, and you know, I really like my viewers. You guys are really like why I make these videos. Um, and my dual carbs worked all right, so I decided to give it away. Um, and somebody on the channel won it and I mailed it to them, so just moved back to my original carbs. 
I think if I change it again, I will probably move to like an EFI injection system, maybe from specialist components. I don't know yet. I'm just gonna run it like this until I have some problems, to be honest with you guys. Ilya says, what is the best type of engine transmission oil you can use for your Mini? Um, oh man, this is a heated debate. This is a question for lots of people. Um, so my favorite oil, my favorite oil is this pen grade. It used to be called Brad Pen. It's actually a green um, oil, but it's a partial synthetic, um, high zinc. This thing is, these, this is really good oil. I've used this for years, years. Um, but I also really like the um, um, Valvoline VR1, the really high zinc mixture. Um, all 20 W50. Um, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of those two oils. So that would be my, my tip for you. Brad says 5,387,860. What is this number? What is this number? Am I forgetting something? The Australian says, are you a PlayStation or Xbox fan? Well... I am neither. I'm a PC master race, man. I am all about that PC gaming. Um, yeah, so hope I don't lose too many subscribers with that statement. Mr. Gareth 66, what is the fastest in miles per hour your mini can go? I've gotten it up to um, 85 and I think that there was still more left. I think it could have kept going, but it was literally one of the most terrifying things that I've done. It was on the highway and like everything was shaking because I can't balance these wheels with a regular machine. The hole in the center of the wheel is just too small for the balance machines. Um, but keep in mind, my, my motor's also pretty big, so I think there was a little bit left over. Mickey Lore says produced numbers figure. That's how many minis were produced like ever. It's a lot of freaking minis. Avenger says, what kind of oil do you use in your dash pod? Um, the oil I use in my dash pot is an SAE30 oil. It's been okay. I hear a lot of people say, um, like, use, like, standard engine oil, um, which I will probably try next. I've not done that before, so that's my tip. The DJSC says, Cole, will you be shipping your Mini to Italy when you move? Um, yes, if we move to Italy, we will most definitely be bringing the Mini. In fact, that's probably the only thing that we will bring to Italy. The rest, uh, we would just, you know, sell all our stuff here and get it again. Well, my tools, but those would go in the Mini, in the shipping container, over to Italy, of course. Joeo? I am really sorry if I mispronounced your name. I have a Mini with a 998 engine and I am losing a lot of coolant. Would an installation of an expansion tank to, I'm guessing that got cut off. Um, you're losing a lot of coolant, um, like on the regular. Uh, if you're losing a lot of coolant like regularly and it's not just dumping out of the like uh, overflow, I'd be concerned that you might be burning coolant and your head gasket might be bad. Um, but if you're not dumping oil, or if you're not burning coolant, an expansion tank wouldn't be the worst idea. Um, I have been meaning to do a video on that, but I haven't done it yet because I need to do a little bit more research before I explain it to people. Um, but definitely, it won't hurt, that's for sure. All right, let's see, what else do we have here? <laughs> Rust is a poor man's carbon fiber. <laughs> it seems to be dumping. Okay, so um, I'm surprised that it keeps dumping it. Uh, generally, this is, I'm probably gonna get some, some angry comments about this, but um, when you first fill up your coolant and you fill it up really high, um, the Mini's actually really good about not, um, not needing to bleed off of the air that's in your engine, um, you know, in the coolant system. It's just a, like, kind of naturally not a very, um, high air engine. But 
when you first fill it up, the mini does this kind of a regurgitation, I guess I would put it, um, where it levels itself with coolant. So like, if you just filled it up and you lost a whole bunch, I wouldn't immediately be worried about it. But if you filled it up again right after that, it's gonna happen again. And then you're kind of stuck in the cycle. So after it loses that coolant, when you, have you tried not filling it up again and then seeing if it dumps it again? Because if it does, it might just be kind of kind of self-leveling itself. I say self-leveling like it's some fancy feature it has, but it's not, it's just what it does. Edward says, hi, smiley face. Well, hello. Matt Gareth says, don't forget it has to fill the radiator for the heater at, and that takes some, yep. Uh, says, when I stop the car, I can see a lot of times after long drives, the fluid on the floor. Um, if it's continuous over and over and over again, um, I might wonder if you have like a leak and it's like building up air maybe. Um, that's weird. Yeah, an expansion take probably, it definitely won't hurt. I will put it that way. It's installing an expansion take is not a bad idea. Ilya says, what is, oh, hang on. Uh, Edward says, the Evans water list cooling I was told is depending from car to car on the minis it's, if it's beneficial. Yeah, I've been very happy with it. Um, it's a very divisive question. Um, some people are like, oh, water's the best cooler, and they're not wrong, but um, Evans coolant doesn't boil over and it doesn't rust, so there's a trade-off. Um, Ilya says, what is the best brand of type of tires that you can put on a mini 12 inch? I was looking for tires, but most of them were cheap and unknown brands. Is Falcon any good? I am a big fan of Falcon. That's what I have on my car. That's like all I put on my car. So I've, I've had, I've seen people who have had good luck with the Yokohamas, but they are not as all weather. Um, like all season Falcons are a little bit more all season. So you can leave them on and keep driving it during the winter. The DJSC says, Cole, I'm considering making my own wiring loom for my 998 from scratch. Uh, do you think this could be done? Yeah, I mean, I guess it could be done. I don't know why you'd want to do that. That just makes me so tired thinking about it. Um, but, you know, if you do it, more power to you. Then maybe you can start selling them or something. But, oh. There's so many other things that take up so much time on the Mini that spending all that time doing a wire loom just doesn't seem worth it to me. Um, 1-800-555-SMILE says, is it hard to change drivetrain to four-wheel drive? There is no direct conversion that I know of for the A-Series block to a four-wheel drive system. So I would imagine it's pretty difficult. Um, I've seen some VTEC four-wheel drive minis, but that's obviously changing literally the whole motor, the subframes, the, the drivetrain. I mean, that's a big job for sure. Mini Tom says, you have a coolant leak, check hoses, water pump, heater matrix, and radiator. See, there you go. Mini Tom has come to the rescue with that, with that tip right there. Mini Gareth says, at the DJSE, there's a lot of wiring drag rims out there for the Mini, so yes, I need to do my, this to mine. Tony Watkinson, welcome. Hi Cole, I'm doing a cam change next month. Any tips? I've watched your videos on cam timing, but I can't quite grasp the concept. Yes, thing. so. Um, well, I, let me let me re reverse that statement there. It's not actually hard. Um, it, it seems really, really complicated. Um, I have like no good way to show you this without doing it on a motor. But um, what I would recommend is getting out there and actually starting to try and follow the guide um, that I did and like get your hands on um, because that is what really ultimately helped me understand it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any tips. Um, double, triple, and quadruple check your math. That is a big tip. Um, take your time because that uh, it's very easy to, to get that out of whack. Brad says, I started off with a nice gray driveway and my mini decided I wanted to paint it black. Territory marked. Yeah, I don't even, my, my driveway is miserably black. Um, like just, oil and paint and cool and it's just destroyed 
CH says, what would you say the best additive for cars designed for leaded fuel? Does the Mini even need it? If you have, um, if you don't have unleaded valve seats, you absolutely need a leaded valve um, or leaded lead additive. Um, I've never used it. My valve seats have always been unleaded. I got it, the car, and it they were already that way, so I didn't need it. Um, but I think you can pick up pretty much anything. I'd probably just go to Amazon and look up the whatever it is I find. The Australian says, have you ever heard of Mighty Car Mods? If so, how do you feel about the Honda 16B VTEC? I've heard about them. I watch them on the regular. And uh, I think it's kind of crazy that they put so much energy into supercharging that A-Series and then they just swap it out with the VTEC. I like the VTEC motors. The whole concept is really cool to me. But um, to be honest, like I've not been in a VTEC that drives comfortably. Um, I don't know how else to put it. Like, uh, it doesn't feel like a mini. When you put that big ass motor in the front, the drive, it, everything gets kind of just changed. And so it, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like a mini to me, but they're still really cool. It's, it's like, I love them. It's just, it's just different. Let's see. Edward says, do you have a CAD quick shift? I don't have a quick shift. I have this, I just put a standard ratio uh, CAD shifter in there, um, which I have a video I've, I gotta edit. It's literally sitting on that camera right now. I gotta edit it today and it probably be out in the next couple days. Keith Miller says, if you had a completely standard mini and could do one mod, what would it be? Um, bone standard, it would be sound deadening. But that's just like quality of life. If I was not going to do anything to the motor, it would be sound deadening. It would just be just so, it, the, the mini's loud. Mini Tom says, Cole, in the Haynes manual refers to things like the bonnet, engine, boot, spanner. Does the U.S. copy of the Haynes manual have grammatical errors such as hood, motor, trunk, and wrench? That's a really good question. Ugh. I've got one right here. Let's see what it says. I'm just going to put this away because it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't support what I believe are the correct terms. It's definitely wrong in there. <laughs> Dang, I'm having trouble keeping up with all these comments. Edward says, if you had 5K, what would you do to get the most return on investment for power? $5,000? Man, that's like, that's enough to do a lot. That's a lot of money. Um, I would, I would do what I've done on my motor. Uh, you can do what I've done for about $2,500 to $3,000, pull the motor out, um, replace the cam, uh, bore the engine, get some bigger pistons, and probably a hot head, port my head, and then, I mean, that's, that's a lot of money, so you could do some other stuff with it too. Straight cut gears, you know, straight cut drop gears, limited si slip, man. You, get, you gave me too much bandwidth there. I think you need to dial it in a little bit so I can give you a more concise answer. Pancho V69, what's up from South Carolina? Hi there, man. Where in South Carolina are you? Uh, I'm guessing, I'm just gonna make a guess and I'm gonna say Rock Hill. Are you close? Um, Ilias says, is it hard to mount a bonnet release cable with a mechanical company? I like that idea. I, that's what I actually had before. I had cable running down um, into the wheel well, and I had a, a cable right down there so that the inside of the car looked still Mark 1, but the, and then I could get it open because getting um, getting these these hinges, this right here, is stupid expensive. Why do they, why do these cost so much money? Like Mark One latch, this looks goofy, and seriously, these things cost $150 here in the US. Silly. 
but um, but yes, it's possible. The lever is all the same. It's it's just different ways to engage that lever. Shaw Air Force Base. I can't remember where Shaw Air Force Base is. What what city is that close to? Um, Lone Star Mini asked me how I say aluminum. Um, when I'm actually just talking about it, I say aluminum, but when I'm talking with my friends who know I have a mini, I say aluminum to mess with them. Um, that's fun. Mark says, calling from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, got a 71 left-hand drive mini 1293 with a 40 DCOE Weber, just about finished. Do enjoy your blogs. That is, that sounds like a fun little car, uh, but that thing rips. Um, very cool and glad you're about to finish it. You know, we're both kind of getting to the end of these projects, which is great. Should send some pictures my way. I'd love to feature that on the channel. Flying Amiibo says, hello from Australia. Why mini? Why mini? Why not mini? Sardor MV says, where to buy parts for classic mini, please? New one. NYC, Pennsylvania, USA. I mean, oh, um, well, shameless plug, my, my sponsor of this channel, Seven Mini Parts, they are the best place to buy mini parts in the U.S., like, hands down. Best prices, they get you your stuff quick, and the people are super cool. Um, and, like, I know it probably just seems like I'm saying that now since they're sponsoring my channel, but I genuinely used them for my parts, like, way before they sponsored the channel and they were cool enough to sponsor the channel when i only had 400 subscribers so i think that says a lot about them oh next to sumter okay well you're not too far away uh welcome to the live stream pancho um djsd says cole if it wasn't a mini what would it be um I was saying before that it would be like a, a early GTR, like a 60 GTR with the wing mirrors. Those are really cool. Ford Escort would be cool. Um, hmm, that, I'd really like a Toyota FJ Cruiser, one of the original ones. Those things are legit. Mark says, still playing with the jetting. Yeah, man, I mean, I don't think any of us ever stop playing with the jetting. That just is like nonstop. Oh, too much fuel. Oh, not enough fuel. Oh, I sneezed. Now I have too much fuel again. Ugh, carburetors, man. Um, Flying Ambo says, how did you get into Mini and its amb ambulance? Um, the uh, I got into Minis, I said a little bit ago, I had a new Mini, a 2007 Cooper S, the turbo one, um, and then I learned about the old ones, and I fell in love, and then I got one, and now the rest is history. Just nine years later, I'm still just totally into them. Brad says, do you, now, do you pronounce Jaguar correctly? I don't see why a, a Y in the spelling. There you go. Did I say it right? Sardor says, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Christian says, Cole, where did you get your mini from? Was it local to you? Um, define local. Uh, it, was, it was actually in Canada. It definitely was not a right-hand drive mini originally. It was a left-hand drive mini, and I wanted it to be right-hand drive because it seemed cooler. Um, but got it in a small town, uh, Barrie, Ontario, in Canada. My dad and I drove up there and drove back all in a 15 hour drive and we just went straight up got it picked it up came right back 1500 bucks at the time for a mark one i feel like i got a pretty good deal eric tells oh hey Corey, welcome edward says that's why i love my mpi yeah i don't know i i i've heard some horror stories about mpis but i wouldn't mind having one myself Daryl says, has anyone made a replacement website to Monty Lamb website for SU carb needles? Um, Seven Mini Parts actually has a, a diagram on their site for different carb needles. Um, they also, if you give them a call, they'll give you some details about the carb needles you need. 
um, looking at that chart sometimes is just like a little information overload. So, um, you know, they've got something if you need it. Flying Ambo says, I like you converted it to right-hand drive, something different. Yeah, and in the U.S., it's kind of a pain in the butt when you're making a left turn. You can't see oncoming traffic, you know, but eh, it's fine. Ilias says, there is coming a new Mini, which will soon be produced in China and will be smaller than the Smart with a length of 3.4 meters. <laughs> do you like this idea? What do you think about the BMW Mini? Well, I had a BMW Mini, and it was really fun but it's not an original Mini. And uh, I'm, I'm not seeing this new Mini that's in China that's gonna be coming out. I'm curious to see the gist of it, but um, that I, they're hard to compare. It's like a spiritual successor, but not really a Mini, in my opinion, the new Minis, that is. Christian says, cool, I got my Mini back in Canada in 2002. Oh, so you've had your Mini a little while too. A lot, a lot of while, actually. <laughs> um, Edward says, what's the horror stories? Oh, there's nothing in particular that comes to mind, but I know that people have issues with like the ECUs and the injection systems not firing properly um, and getting a new ECU actually, well, it's easier to get a new ECU now than it was, but um, previously there weren't people who, who made them. <laughs> Something in my room just made a noise. Um, <laughs> Flying Ambo says, but I can deliver the mail. Well, I, de I, I guess that's technically correct. There have been a few mail people who are like, is that an old mail car? I'm like, mm -mm, no. Um, Sardor says, can you add a link to your sponsors? Seven mini parts. Yeah, they're in the description of this uh, episode and all of my episodes. If you, um, it's, yeah, seven mini parts. Or it's uh, seven e n t dot com. Um, the Australian says, do you have a short throw mini in your shifter? No, mix that up. Do you have a short throw shifter in your Mini? Um, no, but I do have a CAD standard ratio shifter in my Mini. I can show you guys real quick. Uh, we've been looking at my beautiful face here for a little while. Why don't I bring you out and show you the car some? Do, do, do. It's getting a little dark out here. It's really dark in here, but yeah. Here's the CAD shifter. So it looks like a shifter, um, nothing wild and crazy there. But the cool thing is um, it has this reverse collar right here. So you lift that up and then you can easily shift it into reverse. CH says, keep up the good work, Cole. Thank you, I will try, I do my best. Two, four, six, eight, motorway, three, five, seven mini parts, nine on a double white line. <laughs> um, Edward asks, why did you not go with a short quick shift but standard? Um, I like the longer throw, and uh, the quick shift is, um, is great. It can be finicky sometimes, and uh, I just didn't want to risk cabin yes just for i wanted to keep as much standard as i could at the time i might switch to a quick shift in the future we'll see can we hear your mini purr please well you can't tempt me with a good time without saying yes so yeah keep Start it up here. Hopefully it starts on the first try and it doesn't embarrass me. And I see some questions in there. I'll answer them after I start up this car here. All right. In. Fuel pump on. Starty button. Here we go. That oil pressure is a little high. Need to adjust that.
right, ask and ye shall receive. Mark says, can Cole, I have an oil leak. Is it common on the tranny or the block or the bell housing gasket? Probably going to have to pull the motor or drop the subframe to fix. Um, so the common places for oil to leak, you might check before you do anything else, check the valve cover gasket. Because what happens a lot of times is oil will leak around that valve cover right at the top there and then runs down the sides of your motor and it makes it look like it's leaking from somewhere else. Um, so what I would do is clean the motor, replace that gasket up on the valve cover, run it, and then see if you can see any leaks, see if where it's coming from. All right. Corey says, I tried putting a short throw shifter in my remote shifter housing, ended up having to trim it to the point where it just snapped when I used, <laughs> when I tried using it, but that was exciting. Um, I'm going to end up trying to fabricate my own. Hmm, I'd like to see that. Um, Flying Ambo says, what's your normal job? I'm a web developer for Ally Bank here in Charlotte. Well, it's an uh, online bank in the United States. Um, but yeah, web developer. Christian says, was your car originally a magic wand shifter? When it came out of the assembly line, it definitely was. When I bought it, it had already been changed. Um, the motor that's in it is originally a 1275 from an Austin America. Um, so that was already shifted into the car when I bought it. Eric E says, would you choose a rebuilt 1971 Mini with a 1300 engine with dual carbs, pedals that respond quickly and stiff suspension, or an original un unrebuilt 98 Mini? I like the old ones. I'd go with 71. Ilya says, also the SPIs are sometimes a nightmare to work on. The injector, wiring, and ECUs are hard to diagnose if you have problems. Yep. That is what I have heard. Mr. Garris says, very nice sound. Thank you. Brad says, did you convert your mini from a magic wand? Um, I think, I, yeah, I just answered that. Um, Mr. Garris says, sounds like mine, but mine is a bit out of time. I can assure you that mine is no longer out of time. Um, it's a little cammy now. I've got a uh, Evo 001 cam for mini spares in it. The Australian says, do you like the Momo wheel ha you have installed or have you considered changing it? That wheel is the best steering wheel. I love that thing. It's very tiny. So if you're not, you've got to kind of have some strong forearms sometimes. Um, but I love that steering wheel. Um, Daryl says, had you thought of a trip to Australia for a mini event? I'm down. I've always wanted to go to Australia and I don't even have to barely ask my wife if she wants to travel. I mean, I like think it and she's like, you thinking about traveling? You want to go somewhere? I'll go somewhere. So I'm down. Uh, Ilya says, rev up your engines. What do you think of the Scotty Kim Kilmer channel? I, I've not heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. Daryl says, Cole should take his mini to Bathurst. Uh, am I saying that right? Bathurst? Mark says, lol, already changed it. It was doing that originally, but the engine head and block is clean. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, so then the places, if it's, if the block and the head is clean, then yeah, around the, around the, um, why can't I think of this word where the block meets the transmission, then, um, the crank pulley that ha often will leak. And then your rear main seal will leak. That's a really, really common one. You can check that one. If you look at the bottom underneath your clutch, that whole housing, the clutch housing, there's a small hole at the bottom. And if you see oil leaking out of that, then your rear main, ugh, then your rear main seal is probably going bad. And you definitely want to replace that. Eric says, okay, thank you. Greetings from Sweden. Oh, hello. Thanks for tuning in. The bit between the two balls on the shifter was too thick and fouling the inside of the housing, hence why I had to trim it. Apparently that is common. Yeah, so I've heard that the new CAD shifters, they've like re-engineered them in some way um, to make it like cleaner and like make it work more better. Um, so I don't know, maybe that maybe that's resolved now. 
Chris says the A series has is a nice simple engine. What do you think? Uh, what do you think to things like the McLaren P1 hybrid engines um, or the 1.6 V6 engine that F1 cars use? That McLaren P1 is. I'm not a supercar person, but if I was to buy a supercar, that would be the one. I think that I, I'm a firm believer that electric cars are the future, and I also think that those hybrid motors are badass. Mr. Gareth says, I've been considering con on converting my Mini from petrol to propane. I have no idea where that would even start, um, so I can't even comment whether or not that'd be a good idea. Dan Callen says, are you going to do any track days um, or any rallying with it? I'll probably do some autocrosses with it here and there. Um, I daily drive it, so I like to not beat the shit out of it because it just means more work for me. Um, but I probably will do some autocrosses. Luke says, what do you prefer carb-wise, single or dual carb, and what are the benefits of having a dual carb? So um, I think dual carbs are cooler, um, but single carbs are easier to work on. Um, dual carbs will give you a lot more low end torque, especially the HS2s. Um, and then HS4s will give you a little bit more higher end torque from what I understand. I've never used one before. And then single carbs um, are just way easier to work on. You're never synchronizing them, none of that garbage. You just tune it, ready to roll. Um, and you generally will get like a higher top end with those. So you'll get more power at the higher RPA, RPM bands. Flying Ambo says, were minis sold new in the USA or only imports? They were sold new here in the 60s. I don't remember the years, though. John Silva says, what up from Pennsylvania? Hey, man. Welcome to the live stream. Brad says, petrol or gas? I definitely say gas. Petrol makes a lot more sense. And uh, when I was in diesel mechanics, they they got really on to us about saying gas um, when we were talking about diesel and they suggested same petrol. So I would say, you know, there are some people here that say petrol, um, but I, uh, I definitely say gas. Daryl says, Google Bathurst and Minis. It was our mini Monte Carlo event here in Australia. Well, that sounds really cool. I would, I would love to see something like that. Do they still run it frequently? Cast iron or bronze for the valve guides? Um, junk room says I I don't have a I don't have a recommendation there. I'm not I'm not well versed enough in either of them. Um, when I brought my mini to the machine shop, I said you know I wanted to make sure that I still had unleaded unleaded valve seats, and then they they did the thing. They did what I needed. Um, so I uh, I don't have an answer for that one. John Silva says, I have a U.S. Mini 1963. Not sure when they ended production. I also have a South African Mini 1969. That's cool. I have some friends that uh, are living in South Africa right now. Chris says, would you ever make a trip to the U.K. to do the London to Brighton Mini Run? I think that'd be really cool. I don't have a Mini um, in the U.K., but that would be really neat. I really, really want to come see the um, uh, International Mini Meet this coming year because, like, 60 years is going to be big, right? But I don't know if I'm going to be able to swing it. We'll see. I'm going to do my best to get there. Um, and, but I know I have a friend who's having a wedding that's probably going to be international. So I can only handle so much uh, financially with, uh, with international travel. It's very expensive from the U.S. Toby says, will you do any videos on aftermarket TBI, Weber throttle body systems with electronic fuel ignition? I'd love to do something like that. Um, but I don't have any current plans to do it. Brad says, any thoughts on the route some company, I forget the name, has been taking, looking into hydrogen powered cars. I've heard the two fill up stations in the UK, so that must be sort of promising. Um, yeah, I actually know a little bit about that. Uh, Honda did one oh, years ago. I mean, I think I was in high school when they started doing this. Um, they called it the Clarity. That was what the car was called. Um, and hydrogen is obviously the most abundant resource in the universe. I'm about to nerd out on you guys. I'm really sorry. Um, but uh, it's really hard to manufacture and process hydrogen. So, um, and, and additionally, like when you fill up, it has to be uh, compressed. So it's not like you just 
stick the fuel nozzle in there and it's done you have to actually like latch it on there there's a lot of room for error so like if it's like new jersey where they fill up your gas for you it might be okay um but i i don't know if much has changed since then do 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 Mr. Garris says the best minis are made in the UK because if you don't want it, you leave it in the rain and it rusts away. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a lot of the US mini guys don't import them from the UK because they're so much rustier than if you import them from like Australia, New Zealand, virtually anywhere else. Anonymous says, would you ever consider buying another mini? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. John Silva says you should do a mini pickup for the next build. Yes, I completely agree. That is what I want to do the next build on. Um, but I have to, I don't, we don't have enough space at the house right now. So this mini would have to go somewhere else. And, um, and I'd also have to convince my wife to let me buy another mini. Brad, Brad says, so you a gas head or petrol head? Um, I mean, it depends on what I ate that day, to be honest with you. Um, Dan says, how much are American minis because older original minis in the UK cost a bomb? So I've been watching the prices. Um, you can still get like, like 70s, 80s minis that um, are affordable. Like when I say affordable, I mean like five to 15,000 United States dollar dues. Um, but the Mark 1s have been selling for outrageous money. Like I've seen some sold for 55,000 United States dollar redos. That's insane. Insane for a mini. Chris says that he's going to teach me the Queen's English. We'll see about that. Mark says, bought the car a couple years ago. The guy had it rotisseried and then parked it for six years, hardly any rust, new paint, put it back together with mostly used parts, lots of old parts. That's really cool. Christian says, as a kid in England, I was the London to Bre I was at the London, London Brighton run 88 and 89. That's pretty cool. I was born in 1989. Thomas says, any experience with a seven or eight port head? Um, I wish that I had experience with that. I I actually tried to do an Indiegogo to fund an eight port build a little while back, um, but that's what kicked off the big rebuild on my current motor. Um, I really, really want to do a seven port or eight port build, probably leaning towards seven port. Ilias says, have you ever put in a window in a mini? My front and back windows are replaced, but they didn't place the chrome plastic insert back in. The rubber is very tight. How can I get the insert back in? This is a good question. Um, I have a tool. Gotta find it. Aha. So that rubber insert is a pain in the butt to get in. Um, and this is the tool you need. Uh, this is, you can pick this up if you're in the US, seven mini parts carries them. Um, if you're not, the lots of, all the mini parts carriers sell them. Um, but this gets like wedged in and you go this direction. And if I remember correctly, it's been a little while and the, the, the filament feeds in through here and you push it into the hole. It's really hard to do. You are going to curse a lot when you do that job. Um, but, uh, watery soapy water helps a ton help lubricate that. Flying Ambo says, I have a 70 Mark II sitting in a shed for 38 years and so rust free, no ice or snow in South Australia. That's pretty cool. Lucky dog. You trying to sell it or something? John Silva says, bought my Mark I USA Mini for 2,500 with a ton of heritage panels. I basically stole it. Yeah, that's actually like a steal. I got mine nine years ago for 1500, 1500 bucks and I honestly feel like I ripped the guy off thinking about it now, but I was in college and I didn't think about those kinds of things then. Toby Reed says, in your opinion, what is the fiddliest job on a Mini? Hmm, that's such a hard question. There are so many fiddly jobs. Hmm. That's really hard. 
Every time I have to do a job, it feels like the fiddliest job. So I, I, I will answer that with whatever current job I'm doing on the mini is the fiddliest job. <laughs> Hey Kevin, welcome to the live stream. Huh, Brad, I found a way out of your trap. That's right. Mickey Lore says, silicon lubricant and spray helped me to insert uh, the chrome plastic of the windows. Yeah, that would probably work. That actually makes a lot of sense. Um, the uh, I don't like the chrome filament though. I like the black one. My windshield and, and, and the back windshield have the black filament instead of the chrome. I've noticed the chrome starts to yellow. I think the quality of the chrome filaments have gone down. Mark says, Cole, how can I send you pictures of my mini? Uh, send, email them to me, classicminidiy at gmail.com. And if you give me videos or if you give me details about it, I'll share it. Um, I usually do a subscriber showcase, like one video that has a whole bunch of subscribers in it. Um, but I think I'm gonna try and start doing it in the videos. So uh, I'll just start working through my backlog because I've got a few subscriber showcase episodes that I could do with all the minis I've got in my email inbox right now. Lone Star Mini says, again, thanks for all you do, Cole. Have to run now, must leave the live feed. Well, thank you for joining and I appreciate the kind of words. Daryl says, worst job on a mini is putting the pin in the brake and clutch. Oh my God, I totally, I haven't done that in so long. The, in the actual pedals, I'm assuming is what you're talking about, like up, you got your master cylinder coming through and there's this pin that connects to your here. That pin is miserable to put in. God, I'd forgotten about that. I erased it from my memory. Junkroom says, what's about the subscriber showcase intro and t-shirt contest? Oh, I keep forgetting to update people on the intro and t-shirt contest. Here, I'll also do it in one of my upcoming episodes. Good Lord, I'm terrible. Um, the t-shirt contest, I do have a winner and uh, I am going to, I, I, I can't announce it here. I gotta do it in a video. I do have a winner though. Um, the intro contest, I got uh, mixed emotions about using that intro, but since there was only one entry, um, they are going to win that gift card. So I'll, uh, it, you know who you are if you submitted that. Kevin Schill says last weekend, I took a part, uh, I took part in our local tarmac rally, two day event with night stages. That sounds pretty cool. Was that in the U S? I have a late model SPI Mini. Unless you hold the gear shift in second gear, when turning a corner, it pops out of gear. Also, if RPMs are high, it grinds when I downshift into second gear. RPMs are high. Sounds like your synchronizers are going bad to me. Um, there's, so in your gearbox, you've got your actual gears, but what the, the there's these synchronizers that allow it to keep, that allow it to move into gear without grinding. Um, it kind of sounds like the synchronizers are bad. I'm not a gearbox expert, but um, that would be probably what it, what I'd be thinking. Um, it could also be that your clutch is just not engaging all the way or disengaging all the way. So um, you might try checking your, your slave cylinder, see if there's any leaks, and then making sure that everything is actuating the way it needs to. If there's leaks, you might just need to bleed your slave cylinder um, or at, update the seals. <laughs> Brad says, is petrol a gas or a liquid? <sighs> You've got me on this one. I can't find, figure out a way to, to get out of that. You got me. Petrol's a liquid, damn it. Flying Ambo says, sounds like an engine mount problem jumping out of gear. That's actually a good tip. Um, you might check those engine mounts. So there's two on the bottom 
um, on each side that it kind of sits down into. And then there's the standard engine steady that comes off the back. So maybe just check all of those. If there's a lot of shifting in the engine bay, it would pop out of gear, or could at least. Um, damn, that's a good tip. Best viewers, man. Gary McDonald asks, is it possible to replace a clutch on a Mini without removing the engine? Yes, it is. In fact, I just did a video on this. I just released it. So if you go to my channel and like look in the, um, the history, it's like maybe it's an episode, two episodes ago, and uh, I go through the whole process. It's really detailed, so go into all the details. Edward says, how often do you service the rear subframe arms with grease? I probably do that every three to four months um, or when it starts to squeak. When it starts to squeak, I just run back there and pump it up a little bit more with grease. Sir Dave says, about the R-clip for the pedals, you have to put the R-clip in a lockable or grip plier and then you go on your back in the car. Yeah, yeah. You gotta lean back in there and get all awkward underneath it and like the door jam is like jamming into your back and uh, you're giving me PTSD flashbacks, man. Mark says, hey Cole, sent you some pictures of my car from Penguin XL. I have a few emails, so if you sent it a couple days ago, um, I am behind on my emails. I keep seeing that little number and it's just like nagging, like, hey man, come read your emails. So, um, but I've just been putting it off because it takes time. <laughs> but if you sent them, I don't ignore my emails. I'm just really slow to respond to them. Flying Ambo says, got to go and have breakfast. Keep making great videos. Thanks. Enjoy your breakfast. I think I'm definitely over time. It's only two minutes. I'm going to wrap this up here pretty soon. Do you have other questions that you want to ask me before I bail out here? Uh, let's say another seven minutes. Fickleberry says... Just on my steering rack, 96 MPI, does the fucking carpet go through the, go, th go through the column? Cause I forgot to put it through. Does the carpet go through the column? Uh, I think you can send it through. Um, there's like a, a circle cutout made for it, but it never lines up properly. Um, I think mine is actually cut and like wrapped around the column. Let's not bring fract a fractional distillation into my last comment. <sighs> Mark says, thanks for the info, Cole. You're very welcome. Junk Room says, what kind of oil do you prefer? There is, uh, there is no real opinion here in the German community. Um, there's two brands. I said this a little earlier. I've got one sitting down here. I don't have many more of the um, Whoops. I've been using Brad Penn, and it's called Pen Grade now. It's 20W50. Um, this oil is great, partially synthetic, um, and that's good. And then I also use Valvoline VR1. Um, the key, the key, no matter what oil you use, is to have high zinc content. That's what your motor needs. That's the that's the key. Um, no matter which oil you grab, just make sure it's got a high zinc levels in it. The Australian says, do you still run the stock seats in your Mini or are they aftermarket? They're definitely aftermarket. They're like a Corbo, Corbra, Cobra, like knockoffs. Um, they're from seven, they're from actually from Mini Spares, Mini Sport. I honestly can't remember where I bought them. There's some, um, and it's also like dark outside now, otherwise I would show you. Those carbon and hydrogen bonds will kill me. Are you a chemist or something? <laughs> Gary says, regarding my second gear issue, if I hold the shift lever in second, I have no problems. So if I let the RPMs come down, I, I have no gear grind problems. That's like a, it's like a Band-Aid though. It's like saying, yeah, I don't bleed when I cover the, the cut up. The blood doesn't come out unless I let go. You gotta get it fixed, I think. Because I will tell you, gearbox grindy issues um, release a lot of metal filaments into the oil, and uh, 
and that causes a lot of problems. In fact, there's a, a, a bypass valve, there's like a relief valve that allows oil to pass by when um, there's the pressure's too high. And if that gets pegged open, um, it'll starve your motor for oil and it's bad. It's bad. That's actually why, that, that happened to my car and uh, I had to do a full engine rebuild because of it, so. Edward says, when pumping into the grease nipples in the rear, some frame, how do you know it's enough grease? Um, it's, you have enough grease in there when you start to see grease come out of the seals on the back side um, and on the front. You'll probably see it come out of the front sooner, but you'll need to make sure you see them come out of the back and be more excess uh, grease out of it. Um, Gary McDonald says, is there anywhere in the Southeast USA to get an engine rebuild? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there, uh, Southeast, if you're close by us, if you're close by Charlotte, I have a local mini mechanic that will actually do it um, if he has bandwidth. I don't know what, what his workload's like, so maybe he won't, but um, I, I know that he takes personal jobs. Email um, and, uh, and we can talk about it. ClassicMinDIY at gmail.com. Brad says, just to alert you from our perspective, the outside world has dematerialized. I think you forgot to tar tell us your TARDIS, your workshop is a TARDIS. Yeah, um, yeah, it's just dark now. <laughs> Fickleberry says, any tips on ball joints? Yep, I do have a tip on that. I have this ball joint splitter. I showed this at the beginning, but um, this ball joint splitter is the best ball joint splitter. Um, it's strong and, uh, doesn't bend and bust and like this, this will, you wrap this around the ball joint um, and then you tighten it down and it breaks them apart. Sorry if that was loud. Um, but other than that, they're not really that hard to, hard to replace. Ilya says, I have an electrical problem with my mini. The blinkers don't work. The reverse light doesn't work. And one of the fog lights doesn't work. Checked all the light bulbs in connection, also the fuses. I have to tell you, man, I'm not very good at diagnosing electrical problems over the internet. Um, that one is something, I, what I would recommend doing is following the lines uh, from each of those, those devices. Make sure that there's power going to them. Um, use a test light to do that. Um, I'm just gonna show you what a test light is, if you don't know, but now I can't. Oh, it's over here, hang on. The easiest way is to get a test light like this. Inside here, there's a bulb, and this gets connected to whatever line you are trying to test, and then this gets connected to a ground, and then you can test to see if there's power. So just run up the line and test along the way, and you can usually find where power is not happening or power is happening when it shouldn't. Gary McDonald asks if the Canton transmission can be pulled without removing the engine. No, it cannot. You need to pull the whole thing. Sly Rob OG, hi Cole, I've been advised. I have a primary oil seal leak. Do you know, do you or anybody watching know the location of the seal as I'm not familiar with this 1275 GT? Yes, so you have the side of your engine that has the like um, tapered cover. It's your clutch cover and it's behind the clutch cover. So clutch cover comes off clutch comes off, flywheel comes off, and then the primary seal is right around your actual uh, crankshaft, right there. Um, I, if you email me, I'll send you a video where I can, where I show where that is. engine rebuild um you were the one that asked if in the southeast u.s um the, the honestly the best guy that i know on the south uh southeast and really the like east coast of the u.s is my friend justin um he's like top notch he can do it all uh, michael says my mini smells of smoke inside the cabin i took it to two repair shops and cannot find any leak in the exhaust uh from the exhaust manifold and 
to the muffler. So there are breathers on your Mini. Um, I did a breather video where you can kind of see where those exist. And uh, sometimes the crankcase, crankcase gases will smell like exhaust and it's actually just um, blow by from your pistons. Um, so you can usually solve that by piping that back into your intake using a PCV valve. Um, the PCV valve looks something like this. Whoops, looks like that. And uh, it accepts that this goes into your intake and then sucks all that back in, um, which might solve that issue. Uh, would be a good place to check. Uh, any recommendations on LED or HID classic looking headlights? I know that there's those really cool ones with the halos on them that people have been like ranting and raving about, about lately, um, but none that I know of that look like standard headlights. Um, all of them look like, like new, fancy. BM Thrill says, greetings from Australia. Any tips for getting a speedometer cable off the engine while it's in the car? Um, have really small hands. Um, take your, uh, your, there's, there's only really one way, like either you need to do it from the bottom um, and reach up a CV and unscrew it. Uh, uh, or if you have a different kind of drive shaft, just reach over that and grab it and unscrew it. Or just get someone with a really small hand to go all the way down from the, from the back top of the motor. Uh, Fickleberry says, what sourcing parts in the U.S. Uh, in the USA? I'm from the U.K., so yeah. Um, getting them from, uh, I mean, getting them here is not actually that difficult. At Seven Mini Parts is my part sponsor. They carry everything I need. Um, and like most of them, most of the part suppliers here actually you get their parts wholesale from Mini Spares. Um, so it's all kind of like a big circle. Mini Tom says, Cole, my phone died, so I popped back in to say thanks for the live video. I'm off to bed. It's uh, midnight there in the UK, and I'm hoping to get out early for some garage time. Enjoy tomorrow, and I cannot wait to see your, uh, your video. Uh, shoot me an email about the editing software. But I think I'm actually probably going to jump off, too. It's, it's 7 o'clock now, and I really want some sushi. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining this live stream. This is probably the most people I've had in a live stream. So I guess this is the sweet spot for the time, Saturday nights. Um, but if any of you have any questions that we talked about, email me, classicminidiygmail.com. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I sell merch, merch.class patreon as well uh, patreon.com forward slash classic mini diy so i will see you guys on the next episode which is sitting on my camera right now cad shifter conversion and uh and then yeah lots more to come see you guys